Fishbone Cooter with Tim and Dave. Ow. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, All right. This is great. This is, uh, <laughs> this is our first official Knowledge Center uh, woo -woo. video we're act woo -woo, that we're actually getting up. Um, you know, the first video is our intro to kind of talk about what the site entailed and everything and, you know, the whole premise of Fishmore Gooder. But um, now let's actually get some knowledge out there or what we consider knowledge, at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, our fake, we, our fake knowledge. Yeah, our fake what knowledge. We think, we, what we think is knowledge. Yes, exactly. We, we touched base on it uh, during the intro video. If you haven't seen it, you know, you can go check it out um, about our go to lure. And uh, I almost told the story about it. And Dave stopped me and said, you know, we should just have a video on oh, that yeah. as a whole um because this lure it's really what made us gooder fishermen or at least made us think we were gooder fishermen it really re-sparked the love of fishing for us because we caught a lot of fish with it let's just put it that yeah, way and, so, and at the very least i think it gave us more gooder confidence yep and which, that's what it which comes led down to. to make maybe making smarter decisions on um you know what you know even what are we going to cast at are you comfortable uh fishing over a brush pile or are you comfortable ripping it through the weeds like little stuff like that which i think this lure did yeah, yeah it definitely gave us that ability to start you know changing how we fished whether it was you know like you said throwing around cover which is something i was never comfortable doing because i would just lose everything i tried to do that with i'm not saying oh. i don't still lose everything i try and do that with but yeah. i lose less Hey, start this off right, dude. Give me a little cheers. Okay, yeah, you're right. Give me a you're cheers. Right. Let's start this off, right, this off right. When you're right, yeah, you're right. buddy. And sometimes you're right. Sometimes. <sighs> All right, but, so um, I do have to pass it on to Dave because I will give him full credit because he found the lure. Yep, yep, like the intro. He I did. mean, I'll claim it every time we talk to him. And the, I, uh, I can't disagree with that one, so I'll let him... I'll let him introduce what our actual go-to lure is. Yeah, Tim. So what's crazy is I found this lure um, watching TV in my parents' basement on a Lazy Boy chair. And I was watching, it was a channel, um, it was like fi uh, some kind of fishing TV or something. I don't even remember what it was actually called, but it was just in between like watching um, like a fishing uh, championship round or something where they're trying to catch who can catch the most fish and the most weight in a time period or whatnot. And there was commercial came on and it was, I mean, it, it's a strike King lure, uh, no hiding it. It was a strike King commercial and it was maybe like three or four minutes long. Cause it's not, it's not a normal TV station. So they don't have to go, you know, you know, they don't go a car commercial, a pharmaceutical commercial, a fishing commercial, you know, there's it's they have time to sit and actually do a good, quicker deep dive into something. And the guy was fishing it and he was like, he was like, you can just uh, he's like, you could just burn this thing, come right back in, just burn it. You could toss it, you can bounce it off the ground. And um, at the very end, he was like, this is this is what I really love about this lure. I can use it to find structure underwater. And I was like, dang, that's I was like, that's that's so versatile because the worst thing to do is, is having to waste time, uh, especially on a trip as well, tying off new things because you don't know what's going to work. So just the thought of having one thing that you could always leave rigged up. Well, first, you know, the lure itself, we should probably say what it is before we get too far gone. You know, he, they, they've mentioned, you know, it's the strike queen, uh, swimming jig, um, with, uh, basically, uh, good old soft bait rage tail. You know, we got, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was just going to hold got, it up. I was going to hold it up. So, dude, yeah. So, you got the striking swimming jig. Oh, yeah. Cover my colors. Right. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. The surprise so, is the fun part. So, the big thing here is um, we were talking about the versatility and the different combos you can make and different colors. So, Dave and I have been using this lure for five or six years now. And we decided, hey, go pick your top three combos and let's compare them and see kind of what we would use if we had every color or jig head available at any point in time so, so this is what we're gonna, let's do this let's do this uh we're gonna go third best second best first best yep 
first best. That's just uh, that's such first, good English. Um, the most good, the most good, the most yeah, the most gooder. So we'll have we'll go. We have the ratings of gooder, good, and this is all I've left in my tackle. <laughs> Deal. Oh yeah. The um. So yeah. Um, so we'll go in that pattern. Um. Yeah. Say what the color is. I guess of the yep. of the the style or the color of the so, jig. Um, and um, do we want to hold them up at the same time? Yeah, we'll we'll do a reveal each time. Okay, beautiful. All right, so beautiful, beautiful. As we were talking about like the whole marina tail now. So I've been going to Shelbyville's on thirty four now, so thirty three years. I've been going to Lake Shelbyville, and as a kid, I fished. Dave's been going for about eleven years. We'd fish every now and again. But I was pretty convinced the fishing on that lake sucked. But I didn't realize it was me who actually just sucked at fishing. Um, but that that one year, Dave brought this lure. And the first time we go out, we start throwing and start catching good-sized largemouth. I was, I was blown away. I've been at this lake for 30 years and never caught anything or had any luck like that. And, you know, day one, we're like, all right, must have been a fluke. We went out again. Oh, we caught more. Every time we went out, we were pulling, you know, six, seven bass in. Um, it was, it blew me away. And they were, they were good, good size. sizes. Yeah. It was like, um, and it was, yeah, it was n- nothing. We weren't catching everything. It wasn't a three, a five. It was, I mean, no, you had one and of, a half you pound, know, you had two pound, yeah. two and a half pound, three pound, but it was the consistency of that size made it to where we were, we were with a big group and we were ignoring the big group, trying to get the boat out as much as possible to keep fishing. Even if yeah, it was windy, just, nasty, yeah. whatever, we didn't even care. The only boat we had was my dad's boat that everyone wanted to be on. You know that people, kids wanted to tube ski. And Dave and I, whenever we had an opening, we're like, we're taking the boat out and we just go fish. Yeah, uh, um, such but, good uh, memories. But yeah, so let's, let's go. Let's number go. three. All right, yeah. So All right, get your three you ready? ready. Let's see. My I got it right ready. here. One, two, two three. three. Look at that monster. Right. Yep. This is Ooh. this is my number three. This is uh get the colors all around. You could see. You go for it first, Timmy. What is yours? So this one uh is a Delta Red Rage Tail. Um, all right. for the swim, the head color. Um I I call it a white head with green and blue. Perfect. Perfect. I mean, that's, I, I don't go with the fancy colors. I call it what the actual color is. Um, but actually, one of the things I love about this, when Dave brought it, that I that just caught my eye, was the rattle in it. Yes. I that is a huge I don't know. piece. Yeah. That's a huge piece of it, is having the rattle to make that noise. Um, at least I think so. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, this is this is my number three. This is uh, the one that, you know, when nothing else is working, I'll throw something fancy on like this and see, you know, I'm going to change it up and throw something new at him. Um, So that's my number three. Oh, Dave, go ahead. My number three is the, um, it's a Texas craw jig. So I liked it because it had the black on top with the blue speckles. And I am a sucker for some uh, chartreuse on here. I've always found that that color kind of just makes it work. I hope that's the right color. That's what I've been calling it for forever. Uh uh, How about but a then, charcuterie board, dude. Oh yeah, oh dude. Everybody loves some good raw meats. The um, and then uh, it was a bluegill. So I like this because it's it's like a little. It reminds me of a darker bluegill bait fish, but it's got that little sparkle. So something if they're not wanting it, maybe they see it and they try kind to of strike at it or something. But so that was my number three. All right. Yeah. So um. All right. We hit number three. Back into the story. So as we were saying, like we're trying to take this boat out as much as we can. Um. Then this it was so intense and we wanted to get out there so much that one day it was just storming and raining and everyone's just hunkered down underneath the canopy dave and i walk down to the boat get in drive five miles up the lake going super slow fighting waves getting poured on to get to a point where you know there was the storm was cleared 
the second we cast our line, we get a call on our phone. So like I said, we had one boat. It was uh, my mother calls me and goes, oh, the storm's breaking up. Can you guys head back? <sighs> yeah. And it was terrible, too, because the whole to get up there took us at, oh, least, at least an hour, maybe. I would I would say 45 Longer? minutes to an hour. 45 we were minutes going to an slow. Hour. It was slow. It was pouring. It was pouring and the waves were choppy enough where the entire 45 minutes was a bucking Bronco. Yeah. And so it was like our, our asses were getting beat up from just sitting and trying to hold ourselves on the seat as this thing was bucking back and forth. It was bad. Needless to say, we took our time getting back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So and I think if I remember correctly, I think we caught a drum. Oh, yes. I think we caught, yeah. we, we caught a drum on this lure, and it was the only thing we caught, and we were so frustrated. We were like, all right, screw this. Let's just go back. Yeah, because right? we're getting little phones being blown up. You know, people want to get out on yeah. the boat. Where are so. you at? Where are you at? God, all right. Yeah. Um, all right, number all right, two. Let's go number two. Number two. All right, ready? Yep. Three. One. Two. One. <laughs> and I'm covering the head of it. There we go. So, it's my yeah. two. As you can tell, um, I'm a sucker for the lighter uh, jig heads. Um, I I don't know what it is about them. I like them. My thought process is, oh, they're brighter. The fish should be able to see them. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I can't, you know what though? It's it's one of those it's one of those things too where it the, the color aside, you can't hate on it because I bet you I've caught and fish on that exact setup or at least that color jig head. Yeah, and actually, I changed this one up a bit. Um, I actually didn't put uh, the oh. rage tail you're used to. I actually went with the grub. Really? A All little right. bit That's, different. So I was not expecting that. If you're popping it off the bottom, you get that nice wave that of little, the tail. Right, yeah, in the uh, in the current or whatnot. Or that's, dude, All right. you can't. Yeah, I there's no it. wrong. It's fishing. There's no there, wrong there's as long language. as there's fish, right? Damn. Well, mine I went mine I went a little bit lighter than the last one. Um, it's uh, it, it's got a little blackish gray on the top, a little red on the bottom, and the white, a little sparkle to it, a little shine. And uh, I threw a red on there, and it's actually uh, it's a smoky shad with a Falcon Lake Craw rage tail. And um, and I just I I've always liked chartreuse, which is why that was my three. And I've always liked red because something about it just reminds me of like gills are red. So if I was going to hunt and I was a fish, I'd be like, oh, there's some gills. It's red. Uh, I, that's something I could try to eat if I wanted to. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's the way my brain works. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is uh, the color of the grub. Uh, green pumpkin. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's why I don't. That It's green. Dude, green pumpkin. <laughs> green pumpkin, bro. I dude, That's what every... Every Texas rig, I always throw it. So, I always start with green yeah. pumpkin. That's number two for me. It's beautiful. Change the tail on me. I did. I. So back to the story. Let's jump back real yep. quick. Yep, yep, um, yep. You know, we gotta gotta wrap that part up as well. Um, so we started catching fish. So for the first time ever, we decided to you know make a bet on who could catch the biggest fish. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a dollar. So I think, yeah. I think, me, uh, my dad, one or two of my uncles and Dave all got in on it. You know, everyone threw in a dollar to see who could catch the biggest fish. Yeah. Oh, Dave yeah. won. Dave won. Damn straight. Every time. No, not every time. I usually luck into it if I do win. But uh, we paid him. We paid it. But, I mean, it wasn't, you know, what, probably three to three and a half pounds. I mean, it was a good right there. size. Yeah, because I remember because usually – Usually, usually your dad wins every time. Yeah, and he and he literally it, uses it, a fake worm on a hook, and yeah, drags he just it drags it. The he'll drag it across the entire lake, and he'll catch and he'll, maybe two he'll be, fish. Uh, yeah. There'll be two really nice fish, and every I think time. I, I think I beat him by. It was like when we were away. I, it, it had to have been like two tenths, like ba- it was just yeah. barely, barely heavier. But although I will say once Dave and I started using this and it started working, my dad always has this rigged up too. does he? Oh, see, oh, yeah. that's the every time he'll that's always how you have know. that out there. Not too real go to lure there. You know, that's how you know. And I will say Dave may have caught the biggest fish. I 
definitely caught the smallest on oh, our yeah. last day there. <laughs> it was it was the most insane. I mean, so this is the lure. The fish was probably maybe half an inch bigger. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe an inch bigger. It was it was like ridiculous because you you thought I hit I it. You... Like, yeah, I thought I was just like pulling in weeds or something like something very light. There was almost no fight, but all of a sudden I pulled in. There's a fish on it, and that just shows like what will go like after a five that. and a half inch. Yeah, yeah. just it, it was, was insane. Hungry. If they're hungry, man. Oh, um, beautiful. Should we go with number one? Let's go with number one. Let's make this thing happen. And um, dun, dun, I almost dun. had the older one. Uh, all right, I'm ready. You ready? Number one. Three, two, two. Number one. Yeah, buddy. This is what I would throw on mine, and I would leave it on a pole if I had enough poles to just leave it on what's there your, all year. What's long. your color? Is that so, the summer cranberry? No, on the no back? I didn't. I didn't know the summer. Cran- oh, um, no. It's just it's summer craw. Oh, sorry. Mine's summer craw. I don't know why I got cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> failure failure so you wait 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 this is no this is no bullshit you we have the same rage tail yep, yep. we have the same rage tail what is what is your jig head um look at your notes i don't know it's, it's in the packaging but you can see your jig head's more of a lighter green than mine i went with a darker one okay which is actually a change up so you notice my first, uh number three and number two were both light uh jig heads yeah with the white and blue yeah my number one pick though is the darker green has a little bit of orange on the bottom okay but this is the one that if i had this every time this combination this is the one i would throw right right to the money's on the line it's the the ninth where i'd have to you know call myself insane because i would just keep using it even if i wasn't catching anything because i'm like i know this one can catch something my jig head is green pumpkin green pumpkin yeah so that's what i mean like i said with the texas rig i will always start with green pumpkin it's just i don't know why it's i've always had some luck on it i've always been able to do something with it um and yeah but like you said this is world series ninth yep. inning Bases uh, loaded, on two line. outs, down you by need four. To catch a fish. This is what I'm throwing out there. This is it right here. At least for Dave. Tim's, I, you know what, too? Yours doesn't look bad at all. I'd, yeah, go, with, I mean, I'd go with yours. It's so funny that we have the same tail, though. The same, the same t- and the reason I think we got the same tail is because that first trip in Shelbyville, I'm pretty sure this is yeah. the only tail we had. And, and I think, honestly, honestly, the, um, I think this tail goes with goes fairly well with every single jig head. So if you it only really had to does. pick one tail, clearly it would be summer crawl. That would be the one. Not but summer yeah. cranberry. Not not summer cranberry. <laughs> but you know what? So what's funny is I had some that were darker. Um, I didn't see them at the store when I was there, but it was darker with red flakes in it. So you said summer oh, cranberry, and I, I had summer yeah. craw, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. I was like, whatever. They call it summer cranberry. <laughs> but yeah, so those are our top threes of our go-to yeah. lures. And, you know, and, and the whole story behind it. So yeah, that trip to Shelbyville, I mean, it was – Dave and I had fished before. We, you know, we always talked about it. We do it every now and again. In the intro video, you can hear Dave tell about, you know, when he came back from college and we went fishing. But, like, that's really what – you know, it's like when you go golfing and have that one good hit that brings you back. Mm-hmm. That was our one good trip that, you know, suddenly right. we're fishermen. Let's right. go. Yeah, let's do and this. Let's do this. It, so let's get back. Yeah. And it went off the rails. After that, it was just oh. nonstop. Oh. Like, just <laughs> always fishing, always talking fishing. And then Fish More Gooder came along. And here we are. Right. And here we are. You know, here we are. Do you remember, I think it, I don't know which part of the Shelbyville trip, the go-to, I will call it the go-to trip, the, um, where we were going back into the cove after fishing in the morning and there were some good old boy, I'm talking just uh, jorts, cowboy, cowboy boots, um, maybe an old baseball hat on, no shirt, 
was camping that? across the cove. Oh, and I thought you were just talking about us. There was, oh, well, it's, <laughs> we're not far. We're not far from that. But usually my hat's gone because I don't turn it around and we go 60 miles an hour down the, down the water. But it was, there was the weed line and there was a gap between the weed line. And I babe, do you remember me babe roothing it? This is, yeah. this is no bullshit. I was like, hey guys, I bet you there's a fish right there. And it was like last cast kind of moments. And I whipped one out. I dropped it like maybe five feet behind it. And as I pulled it through, a bass grabbed it. And it wasn't it wasn't huge or anything, but it was still it was sh- shocking that I was like, I think there would be something there because there's like a little tiny oh, opening. I do remember actually. And now then, it's, and I then really the good old yes. boy, the good old boy goes, Yeah, baby. No, I and actually I remember. Screaming. It was me, you, and your dad on the boat. Yep, I remember that throw that was, now. That's because uh, it was far away, and you're like, uh, ah, it needs to get there. So you just huck this thing. Oh, it was amazing. And it, it was amazing. Forever. And yeah, no, so dude. yeah, um, just to kind of wrap up about the lure. Like, really, like it reinvigorated our absolute obsession with finding time to fish in the morning before work, or knowing what pond to stop at as you're driving home from work. And now here I am, as Dave said, you know, just for the past few years, suddenly I have, you know, six rods on the boat every time we go out that takes mm-hmm. up all of the holders. And I feel like, oh, yeah, let me do this. This, You know, when I'm watching Major League Fishing, they have, you know, <laughs> 10 rods on their bed. I'm going I'm to do that. And I'll use one rod the whole time. Oh, God. Something. And oh, it's just, everything beautiful. else just sit there. And I just take up the space. Um, but no, like this, like I said, you know, we wanted to start off, you know, with our first official knowledge center video talking about our go to, yeah. um, you know, and we love it. You know, it's literally it's in my tackle every time. Every time I go hit the water, I'm taking one of these. Um, and we just told you our favorite combos, you know, my favorite way to fish it. If I can, I'm on the boat throwing it at shore mm-hmm. and I'm just popping it along the shoreline coming out to me. Oh, yeah. And that's it's- my go to way um yeah you being a boat guy you get that i don't have a boat so if i'm fishing at the shore i um i prefer to peasant my ass (laughs) Uh, (laughs) i prefer it i prefer to cast it you know five six feet where i think there's a little bit more depth off the shoreline and i kind of just run it along the shoreline um and i've had i've had pretty decent success with that but then again sometimes you just cast it straight and you work it across back to you and it's and like it doesn't you know, it almost doesn't you never matter know. you can do anything with the damn thing but you know if you're one of those who tuned in first of all again thank you but if you've used this before or combos similar to this and you have any advice drop it in the comments let us know because we're here i mean we're here not to just you know spread knowledge as we said before you're not going to come here and you know we're we're not experts we want you to tell us, you know, how you used it before, different combinations that you say, you know, work for the best or how to fish it in ponds, rivers, lakes, oh, wherever. Yeah. And if you, know, you tell, have um, if you have if you have another lure that's very similar to it, but maybe has a tweak that you think is better, let us know. Cause that's a damn lure that I want to try. You know, I, I oh, wanna I, there's one that's better. I want to be fishing that too, or at least give it a good uh, college try. And if it doesn't work, I'm going back to this thing. All right. Hey, dude, go to lure. Let me see it one more time. Let me see your number one one more time. Oh, absolutely. One more time. Beautiful. So, hey, it's Dave and it's Tim with Fish More Gooder. Uh, if you like this, you like it, subscribe. Um, let us know what you think. If you have a better lure, let us know what your better lure is. And um, find a time to go cast one more time. Let me get one more Fish up top. More. Oh, I was going to sing the outro song. We tried an intro song. For the first video, so I was gonna do an outro song. Fish more good with Tim and Dave. Oh. That got weird. That did get weird. <laughs> we rambled a little bit on that one. <laughs>